completing the square is a topic that is confusing for a lot of Algebra 2 students, um, but it is useful, and it's a very useful tool in solving quadratics. So I'd like to show why it's useful and hopefully make the topic a little bit easier. So there are certain trinomials that are very easy to factor. Trinomials that look like x squared plus 6x plus 9. Well, how can you factor this? You want to find two numbers that add together to get 6 and multiply together to get 9. And those two numbers are 3 and 3. So you can represent this as x plus 3 times x plus 3, which is the same as x plus 3 squared. Um, this is called a perfect square trinomial. Uh, x squared plus 8x plus 16. This is another perfect square trinomial. What two numbers multiply together to get 16 and add together to get 8? Well, that's 4 and 4, so this factors to x plus 4 squared. Um, another perfect square trinomial would be x squared plus 10x plus 25, because 5 plus 5 is 10, and 5 times 5 is 25, so this factors to x plus 5 squared. So trinomials that look like this, perfect square trinomials, are really easy to factor. So if we can take something that's not a perfect square trinomial and force it to be a perfect square trinomial and factor it, then we can, we can solve um, specific quadratics a lot easier. Um, if you have a quadratic like x squared plus you know, 8x minus 2 is equal to 0. Well, this isn't easily factorable. It's hard to find two numbers that add together to get 8 that multiply together to get negative 2. Uh, I suggest that you can't do that. So it's best in this, at this point to solve by completing the square. So add 2 to both sides, and you get x squared plus 8x is equal to 2. But now you want to force what's on the left-hand side to be a perfect square trinomial. So you want to add something to this so that it's easily factorable. Well, what makes this a perfect square trinomial? Two numbers, uh, a number that plus itself is 8, um, that would be 4. So 4 squared is 16, so add 16 to this side. Add 16 to this side. So what does this factor to? This factors to x plus 4 squared. You completed the square on this side by adding the 16. This is equal to 18. So now you can solve this by taking square roots. Take the square root of this side, take the square root of this side, and you'll get x plus 4 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 18. Subtract the 4, uh, and you can simplify this square root of 18. But this is the process to complete the square. So sometimes it's not, not always this easy to pick out what you're supposed to add here. So maybe let's look at something a little more difficult. If you look at a trinomial like x squared plus 11x minus 1 equal to 0. Well, first of all, add that 1. So then you have x squared plus 11x equal to 1. And then you're going to add something here to make this a perfect square trinomial. So some number plus itself is equal to 11. Well, some number that plus itself is equal to 11 is half of 11, or 11 over 2. So what you're going to add here is 11 over 2 squared. So you're going to add 11 over 2 squared. And so you have to add that to both sides, add 11 over 2 squared. And in fact, that's the way it always is. When you complete the square here, what you're adding to this binomial to get a perfect square trinomial is you always have to add your b over 2 squared to both sides. <clears throat> so then what, what is this trinomial? This trinomial is x squared plus 
11x plus 121 fourths, and this is equal to 1 plus 121 fourths. Well, you might look at this and, and think this is not easily factorable. This doesn't look easy to factor. But remember that you add this 11 over 2 squared, and that's the number that times itself is equal to this, and that's the number that plus itself is equal to this. So when you factor it, you have x plus 11 halves squared, and that's equal to, well, here you have to find a common denominator as 4 fourths plus 121 fourths. And then you can solve by taking square roots. Um, but this is the, the point that maybe is tricky for students, because that doesn't look like it's easy to factor, but if you re remember that you added this 11 over 2 squared, that's the number that times itself is equal to this number, and plus itself is equal to this number. Okay, one more topic about completing the square is that in order to complete the square, your a value has to be equal to 1. So if you have a trinomial like 3x squared plus um, 6x minus 1, equals 0. Your a value has to be 1. In this case, your a value is 3. So divide both sides of the equation by 3. Divide this side of the equation by 3. And divide this side of the equation by 3. And what are you left with? Well, 3 over 3, that's 1. So you're, you have your a value of 1 now, plus 2x, and then minus 1 third. Now, 0 divided by 3 is still 0. And now we're at the point where this is not easily factorable, but I can add the one-third to both sides and then complete the square. So you have x squared plus 2x is equal to a positive one-third, and then I have to add b over 2 squared to both sides. So I'm going to add, I'm going to add b over 2 squared and add b over 2 squared. Here your, your b value is 2. 2 over 2 is 1, so this trinomial really is x squared plus 2x plus 1, which factors to x plus 1 squared. Again, I just took this b over 2, and I dropped it into my binomial squared. Because this perfect square trinomial is x squared plus 2x plus 1. Some number that times itself is equal to 1, that plus itself is equal to 2, that number is 1. And this is equal to 1 third plus 2 over 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1. Get a common denominator, that's 3 thirds. So then you have x plus 1 squared is equal to 4 thirds. And then again, solve by using square roots.